Hello and welcome everybody. So we all know about how implementing mechanics into a game to make it viable as a live service game usually sucks. Content is gated, game progression is elongated to make you buy shortcuts and so on. But Wayfinder on the other hand transitioned now the other way round and I can tell you they nailed it. It has become a fantastic single player and co-op blend between World of Warcraft and Diablo. In this video I want to showcase where this game stands today, where it excels at and where it still needs some work. I will cover visuals and technical state, what kind of content you can expect, combat, progression and customization systems, here's where they really did a great job on the game transition and finally my thoughts on story and what still needs some work. What immediately sticks out is the fantastic art style of this game. People always compare it to Wildstar with its blend of tech, guns and fantasy themes. I agree, but even closer is the arcane animated series on Netflix. This is like the game version of that. I think games like Pellworld or more recently Once Human are examples where the art style can be very inconsistent and sometimes look very cheap in loss for a better word here. But Wayfinder is like a flawless painting. Everything fits, great attention to detail and thus very immersive. I personally did not encounter any significant performance issues apart from very occasional loading stutters when a new zone or new enemies appear. But everything feels snappy and responsive, which is important for the combat and movement, more on that later. Now what kind of content can you expect? I called it a blend of World of Warcraft and Diablo before. Now it has not the content depth of a World of Warcraft, but you will find a lot of familiar systems here. You have open world zones filled with classic side quests, dynamic events, patrols and job boards to provide you with tasks. The main story will gradually unlock your progression systems and things like a mount. The side content in the open world keeps you busy and constantly hands out rewards. At the moment, two big maps are available for your open world roaming, with a third planned at full release. But the available content is already pretty massive, especially for a 25 bucks game. You also have a player housing feature and a main city hub. But the main part of your time you will spend in dungeons and on the so-called hunts, which are essentially boss fights. Those dungeons are divided into four different zones or layouts, are procedurally generated from the zone related tile sets and will usually take around 20 minutes to complete. Those dungeon runs or expeditions as they are called have usually a main objective and several optional side activities like hidden chests, special combat encounters, puzzles and so on. Here you will mainly farm your gear and resources to upgrade your equipment. Hunts are pretty much simple boss arenas which will let you directly encounter the big baddie without any attached dungeon crawling. Speaking of dungeon crawling, this game is like the perfect dungeon crawler and I would say you spend 60 to 70% of your time here and not in the open world zones. And boy is it fun to smash through these dungeons and boss fights, which leads nicely to the really satisfying combat of this game. You have 8 different character archetypes, the Wayfinders, which all come with their own skill set. 3 skills on rather short cooldowns and a kick ass ultimate ability. You can switch between those characters seamlessly all the time, even during an expedition. On top you have your basic melee or ranged attacks and a weapon ability which works like an extra skill you can use. This mix works wonders and is pure fun to play around with. Enemy attacks are decently telegraphed, you have a dodge button, blocking is also very strong in this game because 100% of the damage is transferred to your endurance bar. Melee combat is easy to pick up but has a lot of depth to it, with main and offhand attacks, jump attacks, block counters and so on. Ranged combat on the other hand feels like a really cool third person shooter with three different gun archetypes, shotgun, rifle and burst rifle. And often I dislike the ranged combat in ARPGs, but it is great fun here. You can dodge pretty freely, Silo has a decoy on a short cooldown that even works on bosses, your skill sets offer a lot of AoE, burst damage or crowd control and so on. It all boils down to a very dynamic ARPG combat style with a lot of movement and a surprising amount of tactical depth 
and the toolset you are provided with is more than up to the task. I honestly have not encountered such a well fleshed out and fun combat model in a while. I would call it the core feature of this game. It's fluid, it's fun and exceptionally well executed. And it is just as much fun and impactful with a ranged setup as it is with a melee build. Let's circle back to how the transition from a live service MMORPG approach to a single player and co-op experience benefits this game big time. You see, progression systems are like the carrot on a stick that keep you going. The hunt for better equipment, a cool cosmetic item, furniture for the apartment, the resources to upgrade your gear and so on. And because it was designed as it was in the beginning, this game has a truckload of this stuff. Now all obtainable in-game while exploring the world or every corner of a dungeon. You unlock more wayfinders, find gear, find echoes, which essentially work as mods for your gear, find cosmetic items for you and your apartment, find resources for all the different upgrade systems, and none of this is gated behind a shop or keys you need to unlock chests and so on. And because they have designed so many items you need for the various progression systems, exploring and opening chests is always rewarding. Even deep into the game you still hunt down every chest because it still could contain something useful. This makes even basic activities very rewarding throughout the game. On top of this the game respects your time and sanity. You have a shared inventory, no need to transfer anything to a different character. You can equip the same item on multiple wayfinders, no need to always unequip anything first. You will get tons of XP items through quests and expeditions, so leveling up the other wayfinders is reasonable fast. This way you can play with your main character and still progress your other wayfinders by doing so. You have a shared wayfinder level that goes on after reaching the individual max level, where you slowly progress through a skill tree. This progression is also shared. When you pick up a new wayfinder, you can immediately apply those wayfinder levels to this new character. Equipment is not level gated. Received a cool level 30x with your range class? No problem. Use it on another level 4 wayfinder for example. This game does everything right in this regard and is everything players want in terms of accessibility and non-gated or artificially elongated content. The kind of game we always point out when another atrocious live service game pulls all that bullshit. Wayfinder has become the perfect example of a player friendly game and I highly respect the devs for doing so. So is it all roses and butterflies? Yeah, mostly. But there are some things you should also be aware of. I am personally a gameplay first type, so the story is not very important for me, as long as atmosphere and really the overall feel for a game is done well. And Wayfinder is oozing with atmosphere, but the story is nothing special. I would call it decent or serviceable, but I also found myself clicking through most of the cutscenes. While it looks like arcane and gives off the same vibes, the story is nowhere near the show's level. It is still early access with now two major patches in the books by the time of this video. It feels very late early access, you have easily 30 to 40 hours of enjoyable content before hitting endgame, which is upgrading your wayfinders and weapons to 5 stars and embarking on mythic hunts for legendary weapons. And this will take a serious amount of time. The endgame loop is already well fleshed out, but could use some fine tuning and more variety. Also, the final open world zone is still missing. And fine tuning is really the main thing I can complain about. Expeditions have a set power level range. I would love the ability to do them in a maximum level mode, so early expeditions have more value later in the game. And once you hit level 30 with all wayfinders, it would be nice to upgrade the open world to that level. I know level scaling is a hot topic, but the world is not that massive to justify zones for each level range, so an optional scaling ability would be nice. 
But that's really it. For 25 bucks you will get one of the best dungeon crawlers on the market with an engaging and fun combat system and tons of things to do. Now that the game was dropped by the original publisher it seems there's not a lot of money behind the marketing which is a shame because I think this title flies under the radar for most people and I can only highly recommend giving this game a try. I hope they will be able to maintain a healthy player base and expand the world in the future. Anyway, for now this is all about Wayfinder. Thank you for watching this video, take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.